We all remember Andy, this cute little boy from the Toy Story movie. Interesting fact, it was the first movie made completely with computer animation, as well as the first collaboration between Pixar and Disney. In Toy Story 3, Andy is about to leave for college, and his beloved toys face an uncertain future. Through a mix-up, they get sent to Sunnyside Daycare, where they meet new characters, including a seemingly friendly Lotso Hugging Bear. I said seemingly friendly because Lotso is the main antagonist in this story. We included these and also other words that you'll be learning today in a special deck of flashcards that comes with this lesson. Practicing with them daily is the easiest way to remember these words forever. And remember, every week on this channel we bring lessons just like this one to help you understand your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. So hit that subscribe button and bell down below not to miss a single new lesson. Now let's watch the clip with the subtitles. Well, hello there. I thought I heard new voices. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear, but please call me Lotso. Buzz Lightyear, we come in. <laughs> First thing you gotta know about me, I'm a hugger. Oh. oh, look at you all. You've been through a lot today, haven't you? Oh, it's been horrible. Well, you're safe now. We're all cast-offs here. We've been dumped, donated, yard sales, second-handed, and just plain thrown out. But just you wait. You'll find being donated was the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> Lotso seems nice and friendly, but he's actually bossy and likes to control others. A bossy person is someone who likes to give orders and tell others what to do. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear, but please call me Lotso. Buzz Lightyear, we come in. <laughs> First thing you gotta know about me, I'm a hugger. Folks would be a casual way to say people. It's commonly used in everyday conversation to address a group of people in general, and children of all ages can sometimes call their parents folks. Where are my folks? Well, they're at a safe place. Where the hell are my parents? So the bear's name is Lotso. It's a short version of Lotso Hugging. Let's check out the connected speech here. So off gets reduced to just O and the NG sound is no longer nasal. It loses the G at the end. Lots of hugging turns into Lotso Hugging. Lotso Hugging. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear. We come in. <laughs> First thing you gotta know about me, I'm a hugger. A hugger is a person who likes to give hugs. There's been a modern trend to post videos of people hugging trees as a way of relieving stress and anxiety, creating a movement of tree huggers. Have you heard of it? Oh, look at you all. You've been through a lot today, haven't you? Oh, it's been horrible. Well, you're safe now. Lotso is trying to show here some empathy by saying, you've been through a lot today. When you say that, you mean that somebody had to go through challenging situations. There was a lot they had to endure. He then adds a tech question that has an interesting pattern of the connected speech. Haven't you? Haven't you has this ch sound as a result of the letters T plus Y merging. And you gets reduced to Y. Haven't you? They haven't you. They haven't you. Oh, it's been horrible. Well, you're safe now. We're all cast offs here. We've been dumped, donated, yard sales, second handed, and just plain thrown out. But just you wait. A cast off is something that is no longer wanted or needed. I was trained in the classical theater, you know. Uh -huh. But now I'm a celebrity cable cast off cat. When you throw something away, you dump it. In a relationship, if you are dumped, your partner ended the relationship with you. 
So we've already covered some really awesome vocabulary. But what happens next? You know, right? There comes a moment when you somehow forget all the useful words you're learning. But I've got a perfect solution for you. We've created an exclusive set of flashcards just for you, available for free on the Real Life English app. It's the best way to review and memorize all the important vocabulary from this lesson. Here's the magic. We use something called spaced repetition software. This is a smart algorithm that knows when you're about to forget a word and prompts you to review it just in time. Practice with it just for 10-15 minutes a day and you'll have the right words at the tip of your tongue right when you need it in your English conversations. When you are ready to get started, just go to the description under this video and click on the special link that will redirect you to the vocabulary practice. Or simply search for the Real Life English app in your favorite app store. Oh, it's been horrible! Well, you're safe now. We're all cast-offs here. We've been dumped, donated, yard sales, second-handed, and just plain thrown out. But just you wait. In your country, do you have a tradition of yard sales? Yard sales are a common cultural practice in many parts of the United States, where people are selling unwanted items like clothes or books or toys to their neighbors or passers-by. Yard sale. Yard sale. Yard sale! Guys, wake up, wake up! There's a yard sale outside! Yard sale? And do you know what is a second-hand or a thrift shop? That is a shop where you can also buy some used items like clothes or books. And here in the clip, the word second-handed means to be sold in such a store. Mr. Lotso, do toys here get played with every day? All day long, five days a week. But what happens when the kids grow up? Well, now I'll tell you. When the kids get old, new ones come in. When they get old, new ones replace them. You'll never be outgrown or neglected, never abandoned or forgotten. No owners means no heartbreak. And you wanted us to stay at Andy's. Because we're Andy's toys. So you got donated by this Andy, huh? Well, it's his law, Sheriff. He can't hurt you no more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now no, let's no, no. get you all settled in. Mr. Lotso, do toys here get played with every day? All day long, five days a week. But what happens when the kids grow up? Well, now I'll tell you. How do you understand this sentence? Mr. Lotso, do toys here get played with every day? All day long. What do kids usually do with toys? They play with them. Kids play with toys every day. That's the active voice. The sentence we've got in the clip is in the passive voice. The action is directed towards the objects, the toys in this case. Toys get played with every day. The passive voice is formed with the verb to be and the third form of the main verb. Let's practice a bit. I will give you sentences in the active voice and you will be changing them into the passive voice. Many people eat rice worldwide. Rice is eaten by many people worldwide. Scientists discovered the new planet. The new planet was discovered by scientists. And the final one, which will be a bit tricky, pay attention to the tense. You should put the verb to be in the same tense when you form the passive voice. Researchers are training the AI to recognize speech patterns. The AI is being trained by researchers to recognize speech patterns. You might want to train a little bit more in the comments section. Five days a week. But what happens when the kids grow up? Well, now I'll tell you. Let's check out what's happening here. So we have one chunk of the group of words, I'll tell ya. I'll tell ya. You pronounce them all together and you, I'll tell you, gets reduced to just ya. I'll tell ya. I'll tell ya. Practice it with me. I'll tell ya. Well, now I'll tell you. Well, now I'll tell you. You'll never be outgrown or neglected, never abandoned or forgotten. No owners means no heartbreak. Yeehaw! It's
It's a miracle. And you wanted us to stay at Andy's. Because we're Andy's toys. To outgrow is to become too big for something. Children can outgrow their shoes or clothes, or when used metaphorically, we can outgrow games or some children's fears. When she outgrows her old shell, she finds a new one that's a better fit. When you fail to take proper care of something, you neglect it. Once I neglected my houseplant, it died in the end. I felt really bad. It almost felt like a heartbreak. Heartbreak is a deep emotional pain or suffering, typically due to the loss of a loved one. Now, I will ask you to look at these two sentences real quick. yay -ha! It's a miracle! And you wanted us to stay at Andy's. Because we're Andy's toys! Who can tell me why we use an apostrophe as there and are they the same? I'll give you a moment to think. So, the first Andes means the place, Andes place. So it is about the location. The full phrase could be stay at Andes house. In such cases, it's very often gets reduced to just a name and apostrophe S. Check this out. The kids are spending the night at grandma's. I'll see you at the doctor's in the morning. And the second Andy's shows that the toys belong to Andy. It's about possession. Other examples would be I borrowed John's laptop for the presentation. That's Maria's car parked outside. So you got donated by this Andy, huh? Well, it's his law, Sheriff. He can't hurt you no more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now no, let's no, get no. you all settled in. Okay, so when Lotso says it's his loss, Andy's loss, he means that Andy will now miss something valuable because he didn't appreciate it enough. This phrase is often used to comfort someone who went through a breakup with a partner or a friend. If you get someone settled in, you make them comfortable in a new place or situation. This phrase is often used when someone moves to a new home or starts a new job. It implies taking care of practical needs, like finding a place for your things or getting familiar with the surroundings. Well, uh, I guess we'll settle in. Okay. Well, it's his law, Sheriff. He can't hurt you no more. Let's break down the connected speech. There is a stop T in can't, can, can. And then T from hurt merges with Y from you, producing the CH sound we're already familiar with. Can hurt you. Can hurt you. He can't hurt you no more. He can't hurt you no more. Can new toys! Far out! Down in a jiff, Lotso. So, who's ready for Ken's dream tour? Let's show our new friends where they'll be staying. Ah, uh, folks, if you want to step right this way. Hi. I'm Ken. Barbie. Have we ever met? Uh -uh. I would have remembered. <laughs> Love your leg warmers. Nice ascot. Come on, Ken. Recess don't last forever. Right on, Lotso. This way, everybody. <laughs> you got a lot to look forward to, folks. The little ones love new toys. What a nice bear. And he smells like strawberries. This funny interaction between Ken and Barbie makes it clear through their clothes and language that these dolls are from an earlier time, reflecting a different era. Far out! Down in a jiff, Lotso! So, who's ready for Ken's dream tour? Let's show our new friends where they'll be staying. So these two phrases, far out and down in a jiff, are a little bit outdated. They are associated with the 1960s and 70s and the movement of hippies. However, they are still understood and can be used in a playful or nostalgic way. Far out is a slang expression that means cool, awesome or amazing. Down in a jiff is a casual way of saying, I'll be there in a moment. The word jiff is a short for jiffy, which means a brief period of time. Behave and don't get beat up. I'll be back in a jiff. We can see Barbie and Ken are wearing ascot and leg warmers. 
They can be called vintage or retro fashion as they are less commonly worn today. I'm Ken. Barbie, have we ever met? Huh. I would have remembered. <laughs> Love your leg warmers. Nice ascot. Come on, Ken. Recess don't last forever. Leg warmers are worn over the lower legs. They became a major fashion trend in the 80s as a part of dance and exercise fashion. An ascot is a type of necktie, but is wider than a regular tie. Interesting fact, the ascot is named after the Royal Ascot horse race in England, where this style of tie was traditionally worn. Here you go, girls. I got an ascot for each of you. Come on, Ken. Recess don't last forever. Recess is a common practice in elementary schools. It's a break period during the school day when children are allowed to play and relax, and it usually happens outdoors. And now it's the perfect time for a test. Let's watch the clip one more time, this time without subtitles, and answer some quiz questions. Well, hello there. I thought I heard new voices. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. I'm Lotso Hugging Bear, but please call me Lotso. Buzz Lightyear. We come in. <laughs> First thing you gotta know about me, I'm a hugger. Who is the hugger? The most important person? A person who likes to hug? A person whose role is to meet the guests? Oh, look at you all. You've been through a lot today, haven't you? Oh, it's been horrible. Well, you're safe now. We're all cast-offs here. We've been dumped, donated, yard sales, second-handed, and just plain thrown out. But just you wait. When you sell second-hand items in your garden, it is called yard sale, yard store, second-hand store. You'll never be outgrown or neglected, never abandoned or forgotten. No owners means no heartbreak. Yay! It's a miracle! And you wanted us to stay at Andy's. Because we're Andy's toys! So you got donated by this Andy, huh? Well, it's his law, Sheriff. He can't hurt you no more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now no, let's no, no, get no, you no. all settled in. What does the word loss mean here? Andy has lost the toys by accident. It was Andy's choice to give toys away. Andy is the one who's missing something valuable now. I'm Ken. Barbie, have we ever met? Uh -uh. I would have remembered. <laughs> Love your leg warmers. Nice ascot. Come on, Ken. Recess don't last forever. Right on, Lotso. This way, everybody. <laughs> what is a recess in this context? A break between school classes? A lovely chatting when meeting a person for the first time? Waiting for someone. You absolutely nailed it today! Good job, guys! And just a friendly reminder that this lesson comes with a deck of flashcards. To review and memorize all these words from today's lesson so that you can use them in your real-life conversations, go and have vocabulary practice. The easiest way is to go into the description under this video using your phone, click on that special link. This way you get redirected right into the deck for Toy Story lesson. That's it for today. Thank you so much for learning with us. And if you are in a learning mood, here's a lesson that you can watch next. Pardon me. I hate to break up the staff meeting, but they're here! Birthday guests of Santa Claus! Stay calm, everyone! Uh, meeting adjourned. What does Woody mean when he says meeting adjourned? The meeting is short. The meeting is successful. The meeting is over.